Hi, my name's Amanda and I'm a pharmacist. This is my drug class overview of diuretics. And if you find this video useful, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel and share it with others who may find it helpful too. Thanks, I really appreciate it. So diuretics are also known as water pills and they promote diuresis. Diuresis means an increased production of urine. Diuretics are for swelling, which is also known as fluid retention or edema, and this is from various diseases such as heart failure, kidney failure, or liver disease. Diuretics are also for high blood pressure. This is known as hypertension. Diuretics cause removal of sodium and water from the body. They work by causing the kidneys to release more sodium into the urine, which also removes more water from the body and lessens pressure on the blood vessels. This causes decreased swelling and decreased blood pressure. Common side effects of diuretics include increased urination, increased thirst, dizziness, muscle cramps, blurred vision, dehydration, and decreased potassium levels. And many diuretic side effects may be due to changes, which are mostly decreases in electrolyte levels. This includes sodium, potassium, magnesium, and chloride. Some contraindications and cautions for diuretics include patients who have electrolyte imbalances, dehydration, and reduced kidney function. And diuretics, they may actually worsen blood sugar control. So think about this for patients with diabetes. Gout, diuretics can raise uric acid levels and high cholesterol levels. Um, some monitoring parameters for diuretics include blood pressure, uh, renal function and blood sugar, and electrolyte levels. Um, diuretics, especially what we've talked about, they can cause a decrease in potassium, um, and decrease in sodium, magnesium, and chloride, and they can actually increase calcium levels. There are three types of diuretics. Thiazide diuretics, these are named for their chemical structure. Loop diuretics, these are named for their site of action, which is at the loop of Henle in the kidney. And potassium sparing diuretics, these do not cause potassium loss. First, we'll look at the thiazide diuretics. As I said, they're named for their chemical structure. Thiazide molecules contain one sulfur and two nitrogen atoms on a ring. And due to containing sulfur in their chemical structure, there is a possible cross sensitivity in patients with a sulfur allergy. Um, thiazides can cause sensitivity of skin to sunlight, and they are the most commonly prescribed diuretics, most often for high blood pressure. And now we'll look at the specific medications in this class. Hydrochlorothiazide, or HCTZ, brand name Microzide. Hydrochlorothiazide is a thiazide diuretic for high blood pressure and swelling. Chlorthalidone, brand name Thalatone or Hygrotin. Chlorthalidone is a thiazide diuretic for high blood pressure and swelling. Metolazone, brand name Zeroxalin. Metolazone is a thiazide diuretic for high blood pressure and swelling. Indapamide, brand name Lozol. Indapamide is a thiazide diuretic for high blood pressure and swelling. Now we'll look at the loop diuretics. As I said, these are named for their site of action at the loop of Henle in the kidney. Like the thiazides, these also have a possible cross sensitivity in patients with sulfa allergy, and they can cause sensitivity of skin to sunlight. Um, loop diuretics can cause reversible ototoxicity. This means damage to the hearing. But once the loop diuretics discontinued, this does go away. The loop diuretics are most often prescribed for swelling. This is especially with heart failure. And they are commonly prescribed with a potassium supplement because they cause such extreme losses of potassium. And now we'll look at the specific loop diuretics. Furosemide, brand name Lasix. Furosemide is a loop diuretic for swelling. Torsemide, brand name Demodex. Torsemide is a loop diuretic for swelling. Bumetanide, brand name Bumex. Bumetanide is a loop diuretic for swelling. Now we'll look at the potassium sparing diuretics. As I said, these are called that because they do not cause potassium loss. They actually can cause hyperkalemia, which means high potassium levels. And some are also aldosterone antagon antagonists like spironolactone. Um, these can cause hormone related side effects such as gynecomastia, which is enlarged breast tissue in males. 
and they are most often prescribed for blood pressure and heart failure. So now we'll look at the specific potassium sparing diuretics in this class. Spironolactone, brand name aldactone. Spironolactone is a potassium sparing diuretic for high blood pressure and heart failure. Aplerinone, brand name Inspra. Aplerinone is a potassium sparing diuretic for high blood pressure and heart failure. Amiloride, brand name Midamore. Amiloride is a potassium sparing diuretic for high blood pressure and heart failure. Triamterine, brand name Direnium. Triamterine is a potassium sparing diuretic for high blood pressure and heart failure. Triamterine with HCTZ, brand name Maxide or Diazide. Triamterine with HCTZ is a potassium sparing thiazide diuretic combination for high blood pressure and swelling. Now we'll look at some of the drug interactions with diuretics. NSAIDs, these are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. This includes ibuprofen and naproxen. Those drugs can actually cause fluid retention. So that's working against what a diuretic's trying to do with reducing excess fluid. And the NSAIDs can also increase the risk of decreased renal function when taken with diuretics. Um, digoxin. Um, the electrolyte imbalances um, can increase the risk of digoxin toxicity. Um, this is especially true with the um, decreasing potassium levels seen with thiazide and loop diuretics. Um, steroids, they can increase the risk of hypokalemia, which is the low potassium levels that can also happen with diuretics. Um, the ACE inhibitors and ARBs, this is the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers. Um, these are also medications for high blood pressure that cause potassium to be increased. So they have a risk of increasing potassium even more when given with a potassium sparing diuretic. So this can lead to hyperkalemia, which are the high potassium levels and cause um, very bad side effects like heart arrhythmias. And lithium, um, diuretics actually decrease the clearance of lithium, and this will in turn increase the risk of lithium toxicity, because it's one of those narrow therapeutic index drugs. And now we'll just look at a summary and some key points. Um, so diuretics, they're for high blood pressure and swelling. Um, they work by causing removal of sodium and water by the kidneys. The thiazide and loop diuretics cause decreased potassium. This is hypokalemia. Um, the potassium sparing diuretics cause an increase in potassium levels, known as hyperkalemia. Um, you want to monitor electrolyte levels and kidney function in patients with diure taking diuretics. And the side effects and uh, drug interaction causes are often due to electrolyte imbalances. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video with others who may find it helpful. And please subscribe to see more of my drug information videos. Thank you.